Hello dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you will be fine. My name is Hidayat Nirmashusha. I am lecturer in the Department of Technology, Saraj University of Science and Quality Technology, Charles. As I am teaching you the subject design and family structure, today is your lecture number 15. In lecture number 15, we will continue about uh, the topic courses at Monterey. And uh, in that regard, we will study about the uh, uh, earthquake portion acting on that. So, an earthquake sets random vibrations with waves in the earth crust, which can be resolved in any three mutually perpendicular directions, uh, while the motion causes the structure to vibrate. The wave imparts acceleration to the foundation under the dam and uh, causes its movement. Acceleration introduces uh, an inertia force in the body of the dam and sets up the stresses initially in the lower layer and gradually in the whole body of the dam. The vibration intensity of the ground expected at any location depends upon the magnitude of the earthquake, the depth of focus, the distance from the epicenter, uh, uh, and the strata on which the, our structure stands or our structure built. The response of the structure to ground vibrations is a function of the nature of so, so foundation soil, the material, uh, form, size, and mode of construction of the structure and the duration of the intensity of the ground motion. Earthquake causes uh, impulsive ground motion uh, which is uh, complex and irregular in character, changing in period and amplitude each lasting for small durations. So earthquake uh, produces very huge amount of ground motion uh, with a uh, small uh, uh, lasting time or small uh, duration but the amplitude is very high. Earthquake is not likely to occur simultaneously with uh, uh, wind uh, or maximum flood or maximum sea waves, but uh, the values of elastic modules of material uh, wherever required may be taken uh, as for static analysis unless a more uh, definite value is available for uh, use in such conditions. The uh, earthquake forces are considered along with the other uh, normal design forces. Uh, the permissible stresses in materials in the elastic mode of uh, method of design may be uh, increased by one third with the uh, inclusion of uh, earthquake forces. The uh, for the purpose of determining the seismic forces, our country is classified in five zones. The uh, first zone is uh, zone 1, uh, the second one is the uh, zone 2A, third one is the zone 2B, the fourth one is zone 3 and the fifth one is zone 4. And uh, these are the respective ground accelerations. And this is the uh, diagram, seismic diagram of our country. Pakistan. The red one shows uh, the areas where the intensity of earthquakes are very high. The earthquake forces experienced by structure depends uh, on its dynamic characteristics in addition to uh, those of, of the ground motion. The response spectrum method takes into account these characteristics and is recommended for use in case where it is desired to take such effort into account. The IS code 1893 to 1984 code specifies the design criteria under earthquake conditions. As per the code uh, for dam up to 100 meter height, the seismic coefficient method shall be used. Uh, while for the, uh, for the design of dam, while uh, for dams over 100 meter height, the response spectrum method shall be used. Uh, according to the basic, uh, basic seismic coefficient at one node uh, and uh, seismic coefficient, uh, seismic zone factor at node and different zone shall be taken as uh, given in table. 
the design seismic code can be computed on the basis of importance of uh, structure I, which is also taken from the table. Uh, and the soil foundation system uh, beta uh, value will also be taken from the table. In uh, seismic coefficient method, the design value of uh, horizontal seismic coefficient alpha h uh, shall be computed by as follows. Uh, that is, uh, alpha h is equal to beta i into alpha naught, where beta is the uh, foundation uh, value of, um, of the foundation soil foundation system. And I is the importance of the structure, while alpha naught is the basic uh, basic seismic coefficient. And uh, this method uh, is known as the uh, seismic coefficient method. In a response vector method, the response acceleration coefficient is uh, first obtained from the natural period and damping of the structure, and the design values of the horizontal seismic coefficient alpha h shall be computed. So according to response factor method, uh, this uh, equation is used to find the horizontal seismic coefficient alpha h which is equal to beta i f naught s a divided by g. Again uh, beta is the value uh, of soil foundation system which is taken from the table given below while i is the importance of the structure also taken the value of i is also taken from the table. and uh, Similarly, F0 uh, is the seismic zone factor and the value is also taken from the table while SA divided by G uh, is equal to the average acceleration coefficient and its value is taken from the figure below. This is the figure uh, from which we get the value of SA divided by G which is the average acceleration coefficient. So in order to get the value of SA divided by G we first of all we have to find the uh, value of the uh, fundamental period of vibration of the dam corresponding to uh, t is equal to 5.55 h square divided by v under the root gamma m divided by g e m. Here h is the total height of the dam in meters and uh, v is equal to the base width of the dam in meter while gamma m is the unit weight of the material of the dam and uh, g is the uh, acceleration due to gravity while em is the modulus of uh, elasticity of the material in newton per square meter the number of modes are to be considered for seismic analysis alpha h shall be worked out uh, corresponding to the various modes or periods and damping and then uh, design force shall be computed if actual response spectra is uh, available then the same may be used uh, directly instead of the above equation so in order to find the value of S by G, first of all we will find the value of T uh, from this equation. As we get the value of T, uh, we will come to the uh, this graph and uh, according to the damping of the structure, we select our curve. Uh, if for example our structure has 5% damping, so this is the curve of 5% damping. If we have the value of uh, natural period of vibration uh, is uh, for example uh, 0.4 so uh, we will select 0.4 and then go to the uh, this curve which is 5% damping curve and uh, then we will go to the left and we will get directly the value of the uh, SA divided by G and in this case it is approximately equal to 0.18. Uh, this is the table uh, from which we will get the basic or just, uh, horizontal seismic coefficient alpha naught value and uh, the uh, average ex uh, acceleration spectra or a seismic zone factor for acceleration uh, average acceleration spectra f naught value. So we have different uh, zones according to the uh, uh, seismic analysis uh, for uh, zone 5 uh, for zone 4 means uh, number five num uh, number five we have the alpha naught value is 0 0.08 and that f naught value is uh, 0 0.40 similarly the number four one we have the uh, name uh, number four name of uh, the zone number four name is uh, zone the number three and that value is equal to 0 0.05 into zero uh, and f naught equal to 0 0.25 for uh, zone 2b, 
uh, we have on number third position we have zone to B and the value of alpha naught is 0 0.04 and f naught is uh, 0 0.20. For zone to A the value of alpha naught is 0 0.02 while that of f naught is 0 0.10. And for zone 1, we have a 0 0.01 alpha naught value and f naught equal to 0 0.05. Uh, similarly, we have a note uh, for underground structures and foundation at 30 meter depth or below. The basic seismic coefficient may be uh, taken as uh, 0 0.5 alpha naught, uh, while uh, for structure placed uh, between uh, ground level and 30 meter depth. The basic seismic coefficient uh, may be linearly calculated uh, or plotted uh, between alpha naught and uh, 0 0.5 alpha naught. This is the table of uh, the value of important factor i. Uh, according to the structure, we have different important factor i values. So for all types of them, the important factor I value is uh, 3 and the rest are the for the other structures. The value important factor I given in table, uh, this table are uh, for guidance. A designer may choose uh, suitable value depending uh, on the importance based on economy, strategy and other considerations. This, from this table we will get the value of uh, beta. And uh, the beta is uh, for differential soil foundation system. The for different types of soil, we have uh, different foundation, and for different foundations, we have different values. For example, if we have uh, type one uh, rock or uh, hard soil, then uh, for the piles passing through any soil but uh, resting on soil type one, the value of beta is one. Similarly, for type number 2, medium soil is also 1 and for type number 3, soft soil is also 1. So, according to the foundation and type of soil, we select the value of beta from this table. Next is the effect of horizontal acceleration. So, uh, if horizontal acceleration causes two forces. Uh, the first one is the inertia force in the body of the dam. And the second one is the hydrodynamic pressure of the water. Uh, coming to inertia forces, the inertia uh, force acts in a, a direction opposite to the acceleration imparted by upward forces and is uh, equal to the product of mass uh, of the dam and the acceleration. Uh, for dams up to height uh, 100 meter, uh, the horizontal seismic coefficient shall be taken as 1.5 times seismic coefficient of alpha h at the top of the dam reducing linear rate to zero. So uh, as you can see the, or the horizontal seismic coefficient for uh, dam uh, height up to 100 meters the value of uh, seismic coefficient alpha h is taken as 1.5 times the horizontal seismic coefficient. And uh, at the top it is maximum while uh, varying linearly uh, up to the uh, bottom it is at the base it is zero. This inertia force shall be assumed to act uh, from upstream to downstream or downstream to upstream to get the worst combination for design. And uh, it causes an alternating uh, movement about the horizontal section adding to that caused by the aerodynamic forces. Uh, for dams over 100 meter height, the response factor method shall be used. Uh, in this regard, the base shear VB and uh, base movement MB may be obtained by the following formulas. To obtain the base shear VB, we have formula VB is equal to 0 0.6 W alpha H. And to get the base movement, uh, uh, <coughs> we have uh, MB is equal to 0 0.9 WH into alpha H. Uh, we are, w is equal to total weight of the mixture of concrete and dam in newtons, while uh, alpha is the seismic uh, horizontal seismic coefficient, and h is the uh, height of the center of gravity of the dam above the uh, base in meters. For uh, any horizontal section at depth y below uh, below top of the dam, shear force Vy and bending moment Vy may be obtained as uh, the as uh, for us. Vy is equal to Cv dash into Vb, while Mv is equal to Cm dash into Mb.
Now to get the value of CV deck and CM deck, uh, we have this uh, diagram or figure. In this we have the value of, on the vertical side we have the value of y over h. In here y, h is the total depth of the dam while y is the point at which we have to find the value of uh, shear force and bending moment. So let uh, if we have to find the value uh, of uh, shear force and bending moment at, uh, at a distance y from the top then uh, first we will divide the uh, y over h and we will get any value. For example, if we get 0.4 and uh, from this value we will get the uh, value of CV dash and CM dash. To get the value of CV dash, we will come to the graph CV dash and then come uh, straight down bottom, we will get the value of CV dash. And to get the value of CM dash, uh, you select the value of Y over H, let it is 0.4, come to the uh, CM dash graph and straight come down, you will get the value of CM dash in this case which is 0.15. So putting these values from this graph you will get the value of shear force and bending moment at a distance y from the top. Next is the hydrodynamic forces due to horizontal acceleration of the foundation of the dam there is an instantaneous hydrodynamic pressure which is exerted on, by, on the dam in addition to hydrostatic forces. The dire direction of the hydrodynamic forces uh, is opposite to uh, the direction of earthquake accelerations. Uh, Zenger, uh, a researcher, presented formula uh, based on electrical analogy methods and with the assumption that the water is uh, incompressible. The pressure variation is electrically parabolic. Uh, as you can see in the figure, the pressure variation diagram is electrically parabolic. The hydrodynamic pressure at a depth y below the reservoir surface shall be determined as follows Teby is equal to Cs alpha as gamma w into h. Through this equation, we can easily find the hydrodynamic pressure at a depth y. Uh, here, Teby is the hydrodynamic pressure intensity in Pascal at a depth y, while h is the uh, depth of the reservoir and uh, Cs the coefficient which varies with shape of a stream, upstream phase and depth of uh, water. In order to uh, calculate the value of Cs, we have equation Cm divided by 2 into uh, y divided by h into 2 minus y divided by h into plus under the root y divided by h into 2 minus y over h. Here, uh, Cm is the maximum value of Cs, while y is the uh, depth at which uh, we have to find the uh, hydrostatic uh, hydrodynamic pressure and h is the total depth of the structure. In order to find the value of Cm, we have equation 0.7351 minus theta over 90. Here, theta is the uh, angle in degrees the upstream phase of the dam makes uh, with the vertical. Uh, by putting the value of theta, we will get the value of Cm. And then put this Cm value in this CS equation and we get the value of Cs. And then put this Cs value in this equation and we will get the hydrodynamic pressure intensity in Pascal's at a depth y. If the height of the vertical portion of a stream phase is equal to or greater than uh, one half of the total height of the dam, analyze it uh, as if vertical throughout. Otherwise, use a sloping line connecting the, the point of intersection of a uh, stream phase and the reservoir surface with the hill. We can also find the value of CM directly uh, from this uh, uh, graph. Uh, this graph gives us uh, on the horizontal side we have the uh, angle value 0, 20 degree, 40, 60, 80 and so on. While on the vertical side we have the value of CM. So let if we have the value of uh, uh, the angle value we have theta is equal to 40 degree. Then come to this line graph and then go straight. Uh, on the left side we will get the value of CM in this case it is 0 0.4. The total pressure at a depth y may be found by integrating the pressure curve above that plane. Taking the pressure variation to be elliptical comparabolic, the total pressure at a depth y will be equal to the average of the stresses, average of the areas of the quarter ellipse and semi parabola. Hence, Pey is equal to 1 over 2 into pi by 4 Pey. 
2y plus 2 by 3 py into y and that is equal to 0 0.726 py into y. Similarly, uh, in order to uh, calculate the total uh, movement of, of pressure about the joint up to which the pressure is taken, is given by half the sum of the movement of the quadrant ellipse and semi parabola. So, hence my is equal to 1 over 2 into uh, pi by 4 py into y plus, uh, sorry, multiply uh, 4 by uh, 3 pi y plus uh, 2 by 3 py y plus 2 over 5 y and that is equal to 1 over 2 into 1 over 3 plus 4 over 18 py y square and uh, by simplifying that we will get the value of the my is equal to 0 0.3 pey into y square. Here PEY is the hydrodynamic shear in Newton per meter at a depth y and MEY is the movement in Newton meter per meter due to a hydrodynamic force at a depth y. The effect of horizontal acceleration uh, on the vertical component of the wire and tailwater loads. Uh, the hydrodynamic pressure uh, acts normal to the face of the dam. Uh, there shall be vertical component of this force if the face of the dam against which it is acting is sloping. The magnitude at any horizontal section being uh, PEV is equal to PEY2 minus PEY1 into tangent theta. Here, PEV is the increase or decrease in the vertical component of the load due to hydrodynamic forces, while PEY2 is the total horizontal component of the hydrodynamic forces at elevation of the section being considered. And uh, PEY1 is the total horizontal component of the hydrodynamic force at the elevation at which the slope of the dam uh, slope of the dam phase starts or commences and theta is equal to the angle between the face of the dam and the vertical so a movement due to vertical component of the reservoir and tailwater load uh, may be obtained by determining lever, lever arm from centroid of a pressure dia now uh, uh, we have effect of vertical acceleration. The effect of vertical acceleration uh, on earthquake acceleration is uh, to change the unit weight of water and uh, concrete or masonry. Uh, acceleration upward increase the weight of the uh, uh, the weight and acceleration downward increase decrease the weight. Due to vertical acceleration, a vertical inertia force F is equal to alpha V into W is uh, exerted on the dam in the direction opposite to that of the earthquake acceleration. While the, uh, when the acceleration is vertically upward, the inertia force uh, F is equal to alpha V W acts vertically downward, thus increasing the uh, momentarily the downward weight. When the acceleration uh, is vertically downward, the inertia force F is equal to alpha V W acts upward and thus uh, decreases momentarily the downward weight of the dam. Uh, for methods of design, uh, seismic coefficient up to 100 meter and response factor method over 100 meter, the vertical seismic coefficient alpha v shall be taken as 0 0.7 times the value of alpha h of the respective method at the top of the dam, reducing the area to the 0 at the base. So, alpha v is equal to 0 0.7 times of uh, alpha h, which is the horizontal seismic coefficient. And at the top it is maximum while uh, reducing linearly up to the uh, base and reaches to zero. And this is the end of our today's lecture.